I'm self-taught on the bass completely. Yeah. So you, you've obviously, in terms of, uh, let's talk specifically about playing jazz because we were talking about it, you know, in, in terms of when you got to New York and you were playing with them players. Um, when it came to actually learning how to get your language together, mm -hmm. because there's one, there's, there's getting the hard ass that's kicking your ass in the bandstand, but then in terms of how does that translate into, and how does it translate, and, and for people watching, into learning walking bass lines, getting jazz vocabulary together, or solo and vocabulary, like how did that happen? How did you do that? I did it over time. Um, people, may I demonstrate? Absolutely. I've asked many people to play a walking bass line. So people might do a walking bass line like so. And what I noticed is I can't hear the harmony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which sort of goes into the thing when people refer to the fact that time or groove is first, it's last because one needs notes to play time and one needs notes to play groove. Yeah. So groove is, and time are the last considerations in a performance. It's what the, it gives us the results of playing the notes. So what I noticed is that it, in a walking bass line, like a blues, made a lot of sense because I went from one to four there. Yeah. Because where am I? B flat. Where am I going? To E flat. Yeah. And so I broke down the components of walking lines to an extremely simple formula because no one owns it. Nobody can tell me that, oh, this is the Ray Brown walking line yeah, or yeah. this is yeah, the yeah. Uh, uh, whomever, you know, or Ron Carter, Ron Carter yeah, 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 walking yeah. bass line. What it is is a perfect academic walking bass line. It has no mistakes. So in practice, if I can practice perfectly, I'm learning perfection and I get better. That's what I did. I would sometimes listen to records right out. I was going to say, were you just like transcribing yourself? I did it by ear. Were you just, yeah, obviously not right now, but were you just sort of like learning, like listening to as many people that have done it before and just thinking, right, I'm going to figure this out. I can tell you how I did it. How did you do I it? I got um, standards. I got the best people that I could find on record, mm -hmm. you know, Ray Brown and Ron Carter and, and those guys. Yeah, and I got yeah, yeah. standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got the, the, the record and I pressed play. Mm -hmm. And then I just worked it out. And I was like, okay, over this chord, mm -hmm. they're playing these notes. And right. over the next chord, they're playing these notes, and they get there by playing, ooh, they're doing a passing tone there. And ooh, when they go to that four minor chord there, they're doing this, this. And that's how I did it. That's how I did it. I was just really interested, did you do it the same way? Yes, and everybody did it the way you said. It's like we listened to records and we played with guys. I mean, yeah. literally, there isn't really any other way to yeah, learn yeah, how to yeah. do this yeah. stuff. You play with people and you listen. Yeah. Or if you're fortunate, you'll pay for a teacher who will write it out for you. There's a concept that I'm not in agreement with that whereby people will write out a baseline and then the teacher will correct it afterward. Oh, right. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You may have heard of that. So in s schools or someplace, they'll say, write a walking baseline. Okay, now let me show you where you did it wrong. And to me, that's one step, maybe two steps too many. Because if I write a perfect exercise and present it, you're learning perfection. It's like write out a sentence in Spanish and I'll show you where your major mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. Rather than in Spanish, yo voy a... Uh, la, el doctor, you know, yo quiero comer yeah, algo. Yeah. So the lesson isn't the student trying their best and being corrected, but the best way to improve, and I know this is the best way to improve, is if I, the teacher, am fully responsible to say, this is the part. Because then, one, the onus is on they me. They can get a feel for how it actually sounds and sits under the fingers. I'm sure Zoltan, you know Zoltan, right? So we've got Oh, I mutual... love Zoltan. Well, he lives, well, he actually doesn't live around here, but he teaches around here, right? He's an old so, friend um, of mine. Who's Zoltan, yeah, yeah. He actually teaches it every single week. He stays at a friend's house just like half a mile away from here. So, hey, Zoltan, if you're watching. Yeah, Zoltan, um, Zoltan Dakani. <laughs> but I think that, I think that he, we were talking about you and he was talking about the experience when he was, 
um, getting lessons from you way back in the day. Yeah. And he said that one of the most helpful things that you did is like, here's a walking bass line, just learn to play it, and you'll just get a feel for what it feels like under the fingers to play a perfect walking bass line. Correct. And then, first of all, instead of trying to go from the ground up when they don't even know anything about it, right? Mm-hmm. So figure out how to actually play the perfect walking bass line first, and then you're going to, you know, reverse engineer it. Oh, there's a third here, there's a fifth here, and those parts as well. And here's an interesting thing. There's only about four or five good walking bass lines that anyone can come up with anyway. Uh, one of the slight myths, of, I think, about music is that you could write a thousand different bass lines. Well, you could, but you can only write about five good ones. And, and the proof might be... Or... Or... Now I'm starting to run out a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we can keep stretching it and stretching it. I... You know, it's just (laughs) too hard. So that's the thing about music is that if people are interested, to learn is very simple. Here's a lot. That's why I was doing this. That's it. Now do it in E flat. Then do it in A flat. You see, if bass players recognize that the bass was built... Here's a cool question, which I've all asked at clinics. What's the very first purpose that a bass was built? What was literally the most... If you go to the left, well, if you're in Israel, if you go to the right, but if you here in England, if you go to the left, yeah. as much as one can in one's thinking, what is the basic reason a bass was built in its simplest uh, form? I don't know if... It, you know, it doesn't matter if you get it or not, but yeah. the answer is to to play a note. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely. not to play yeah. a root, because what if the music doesn't require it? It's not to play a bottom end, because what if it's up here written? So it, ter- it tends to be logical to me that if all instruments in music, certainly all orchestral classical music, all jazz play- music, are taught only, I repeat only, by reading music, when I find that maybe our instrument isn't, that wouldn't it be a good idea since the bass is actually designed to learn notes, or built to play notes, mm. why not be put in a position to be taught notes if one pays a check to be taught? Yeah. And that's just my logic. Uh, to learn Spanish, the only way that I can come up with that I could possibly speak Spanish, and people say that music is a language, so if music is a language, the only way I could speak Spanish is to learn the words. Yeah. yeah. There's no other way to do yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So that's how I look at this. So.